So you've been resin printing and now you've got a mess. Your FEP is worn out or it broke. Well, today we're gonna go through changing the FEP. It's a very simple process for most printers. Um, the process that I'm doing is going to be on a Megasonic 8K today. Um, that printer is the one I needed to replace, so it's gonna take me a little bit longer, but it lets me actually kind of talk about the process a bit more, and what you wanna see when you do this. So definitely one of those things, most resin printers, this is the way it works. So kind of keep that in mind as we go through, but we're gonna go from basically getting the old FEP out to installing the new FEP, and also some discussion along the way about how important an LCD protector or a screen protector on your LCD and your projector and your printer can be critical to printing. So definitely keep that in mind as you join us today. So let's get inside and let's talk about this more. All right, guys, so as we talk about this more, the FEP, the, the resin fat, the heart of the chemical in your printer. Well, pretty bad when the FEP gets torn, damaged in any way, and it leaks. Oh, the leaks are a nightmare for these printers. It's a thin layer of plastic holding all that liquid resin in your bay, and some of it gets underneath. Well, what happens at that point? If you're running your printer when it happens, it's gonna cure right on your LCD. And it's gonna mess up your printer. Unless you take the time and make sure you make the investment to get an else thin LCD protector. These things are a lifesaver and a cost savings. So make sure you're doing that because, well, essentially an LCD screen is expensive and time consuming to replace. These are 30 bucks for like three of them and take 10, take two minutes to replace. And guess what? You're back to printing once you fix your FET film. So definitely investment. Keep that in mind as you go through with this process of 3D printing. You want to protect that LCD at all costs and that digitizer and all that. You don't want resin down in that machine in any way. Um, it happens. Um, I made the mistake on a little printer. Luckily, the LCD didn't cost me too much to replace. And it was an adventure for me to replace. I had fun with it. But as we get ready to move into actually getting the bat bay opened up to replace a FEP, um, please consider if you're new here, hitting that subscribe button. Um, we're ever growing, we're doing all kinds of new things. This is kind of a first new how-to video with the new shop, kind of a new view, trying it out. So definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new here. And if you are returning, Thank you for sticking with us. So also, if you like the content you see today, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you have any questions about 3D printing, what we're doing today or any of that, hit me up in the comments down below. So let's move over to the workbench and take a look at replacing that FET. Okay guys, so as you can see, this is the FET bay. It's got a puncture in it and it leaked down into my screen protector. I've already removed the screen protector and we're gonna kind of start getting ready here to get this out. You can see I've got my hex head bit set here. Um, so this one is a rather big one. This is the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K's VAT bay. So I've chose a big one to work on. A lot of the other ones are smaller, less screws, stuff like that. This one takes a 2.5 millimeter, um, which is the one I'm looking for. I'm a little disorganized because, well, the move will do that to you and I've got to get all my tools in one back in one piece. So I'm finding the right one to fit and I've got this little electric screwdriver and I've got it down on the minimum torque. And what this does is it's just going to let me work faster for the removal process. So to start out, fixing your FET bay is really easy. Um, first, we've got to get the FEP out, which is these screws that I'm removing. You may want a good container to hold your screws in and just kind of keep things separated, keep them separated out because some FET bays can actually have two different sizes of screws. And actually, you'll see here, once I take this clamp out and get it unbolted from the top of the vat, there, the other screws are a lot shorter, but they're still 2.5 hex heads. So... This is gonna take a little bit to get through because you can see there's a bunch of them. And this is actually the first time I've had to replace this on this printer since I've gotten it. So we're gonna move forward. We're gonna get those done. We'll kind of speed up here a little bit and get those out of here while we do that. So kind of keep in mind, you notice I'm wearing the nitrate gloves because um, there is still resin residue on the vat bay. So I don't wanna get that on my hands preferably. And plus we're gonna to have to do some cleanup once we get this off of just the seams around the inside of the FET bay. 
to make sure we don't have anything there to kind of disrupt the seal because we don't want that seal to get disrupted and have another leak because that's just no bueno or any of that particulate to get in there. So once I've got this off and we're going to, and we'll fast forward a little bit because there's like 30 screws here. Um, you'll see that I'll actually remove this from the top of the vat bay. I'll wipe down the edges really, really well. Kind of look for any resin clumps or anything like that to make sure that there's nothing that's going to mess with the seal. And as you can see, I'm just going one by one to get this done. So we'll jump forward here and we'll get to actually removing that bar because the multiple screws. So once we have that out, it's real easy. As I said, it comes, you flip it over, it pops right out with a little bit of push and then definitely go around the seam here and clean up this resin bay. So it's one of those things you don't want those clumps to go through. And you can see I've used that FEP hard. <laughs> um, it's been used, I probably did about 80 prints before having to do this. So it was really well done. It worked really well and we got to get it cleaned up. So the next thing I'll do is now that that's out, I'll flip it over and I'll repeat the same process. So keep in mind, this is the top. This is where the FEP layer needs to be. Once you undo it, you can see I'm just undoing all the screws for this and that basically these two pieces will separate and the old FEP will be able to be removed. Once I remove that, then I'll wipe down both frames just to be on the safe side with the microfiber cloth. And then I will basically start reversing the process with the FEP. So um, we'll jump forward to that part here. And basically, as you can see, the top frame has come off. The FEP is between them. So, and you can see here, I'm using the microfiber cloth. I'm wiping it off really good just to make sure there's no residue or anything between it and the FEP because no leaks. I don't want a leak, especially with this printer. So, and this is pretty standard cut for everything that you're gonna do with all the printers. So here comes the FEP, it's peeling off. Nice and pretty. And you guys can kind of see, I'm trying to show you the punk, where the puncture is. That thing will go to the trash can and we'll get it out of here and we'll start laying down the new FEP. So a lot of FEPs come with a top and a bottom protective layer, so make sure you uh you are peeling those away you can see here i'm showing you the fep um this is one that i've purchased it's a really good material i'll peel off the top protective layer and the bottom protective layer the side with the sticker is the fep side so i want to make sure i get that laid down on here correctly and then from this point forward it is just reversing the process you notice i didn't cut the fep to fit yet um, that's because I'm not ready to do so. So we'll get the two frames screwed back together with all the screws. And then you notice I'm not so not putting any tension on it. Right now is not the time you want to tension this. You want to make sure that you're tensioning it when we're actually laying it into the bay itself, which um, that's when the tension comes on. Because if you put this together right and you get that tension around that seam, this should just sound like a drum if you tap on the, on the FEP. You'll also notice as I go through here that I'll cut away the excess after I actually put it into the main frame. So what I'll do with the main frame is I will put the bolts into all four. I'll start going around Robin. Now this is the critical step. When I'm putting the FEP frame back into the FEP bay, don't tighten it down immediately. You want to tighten it down maybe about halfway and then put in the next bolt and do this in the ring. Because what you'll do as you do this, um, it puts a little tension on it and you want to go through as you're adding, as you go around, tighten, 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 and keep going in loops until you have them fully tightened down and create that tension. You may see some wrinkles. Don't worry about that. That's going to go away as we tighten this down. And that way, once it's fully tightened down, you'll have all your bolts in, you'll be able to tighten it. Now at the end here, I hand tighten it with the Allen wrench key that you see sitting there just to make sure I'm not over tightening and stripping out the screws with the little screw gun. The screw gun is just there for a little bit of expediency because um, this thing is huge and there's probably twice the amount of screws you would normal have from like a Mono X or even just a little six inch resin printer. So basically, like I said, you'll go through, put them in about halfway, then go through and then tighten them down one by one, flowing in a pattern. Um, 
but once you have that and once they're tight that FEP should be like I said it should you should be able to tap your finger it be like a drum then you can take a pair of scissors and exacto knife go around the outer frame and clean up the excess which you'll see me here do at the end so again it's putting in a bunch of screws this is really not an overly difficult thing to do um, but it is just a little bit of a process to make sure that you get it put in there um, safely so if you guys have any questions definitely let me know down in the comments below um, and I'll have a link to a couple of FEPs that I use as well as we go through this but once it's done um, make sure you know look at your seams make sure there's no jagged parts or anything and then go set it down and make sure it sets evenly in your printer and you are done all right guys that's the long process so in actuality it took me 25 minutes to do the replacement on this printer this is a big printer so that is a 13 inch resin vat that is a big most of your standard little printers are six the Saturn S of Mono X is our 9s. This is a big old 13. So it took me longer than usual, but it also let you kind of see more of the steps in longer detail. And let me talk a lot more too. So, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you found it informational. And as we move through and look at different things and start really kind of digging more into resin printing, um, I kind of hope to share things. I want you guys to share things with me. So if you have any questions, comments, or things, Definitely hit me down in the comments down below. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always, as you're heading out, please hit that like button. It does help us out. So thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.